Ramanujan for G is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. You know, so the first Newton's uh, set of Newton's laws that that are in play is that if you take m1, right? M1, what are all the forces that are acting on the body? One is there is gravitation. Always there is gravitation, right? So first force you draw the gravitation downward, right? The second force is because it's on a table. The table is not indicated here, but it is on a table, okay? So if there is a table, then there is the normal force that the table applies on the body. This has nothing to do with gravity, okay? It is because the table is uh, uh, is sitting on on the ground, and the table is a solid that it is preventing the body from falling, right? So the table is applying a normal force upwards. So if you take mass m1 g uh, m m1 g downward force uh, weight of the of the body m, okay? Now what is the value of m, right? The value of n is the body is at rest in this direction, right? Because it is at rest, n will equal mg, okay? So that is all the laws. You have already applied all three Newton's laws. Just looking at this mass, single mass m1, the first law, uh, time, first law you applied was A applies the force on, gravitational force is there, A applies the force on B, B applies the force on A, right? Second law is the, no, uh, you know, and, and that is happens between the Earth and the mass. That you must understand. Okay, so the mass is applying force on the earth. The earth is for applying a force on the mass. It is a that's why it is called a non-contact force. They are separated by by distance, yet they are applying a force on each other. Okay, then there is the contact force, which is normal force. Right, the table is pushing the mass up so that the mass is at rest. Because the mass is at rest. N equals M1G. So that is because of Newton's first law. Okay. Because it is at rest, the forces are equal. Okay. So now in the vertical direction, you have N, N1 equals Mg. Right. Then the second uh, um, uh, law is uh, why is it M1G? M1G is because uh, of F equals Ma. Right. So G is the uh, acceleration due to gravity. So the force with which it attracts M1 is M1 times A, right? So now you have applied all three laws just by looking at this one body. There is another force on this body that is from the thread, right? So let's say the thread applies a T in the horizontal direction. If the thread applies a T, right? The mass applies uh, a force of T on the thread. That's why the thread is uh, tense. Right, so there is tension in the thread. Right, so the mass applies a force on the thread. The thread applies a force on the mass. Okay, the thread is pulling the mass. Right, the mass is pulling the thread. That is again Newton's third law. Okay, there are two bodies. The thread is a whole body. Okay, it is a weightless body. Okay, according to the problem, right, it is a weightless body, but the or its weight is negligible. It's not a weightless body. Its weight is negligible. So here the mass is pulling the thread. The thread is pulling the mass. Okay, so that is a Newton's third law: opposing forces pair. Okay, so so now if you look at the body M1 in the horizontal direction, there is only one force, T. Okay, now T will equal M1A. Okay, so the body is going to move. If someone pulls it, if there is no uh, uh, friction, right? They will tell you in the problem if, if they use the word smooth. If they use the word smooth, it means there is no friction. Okay. See all these problems. Now uh, they are in, uh, creating a world for you to look at in, in the abstract. Okay? So uh, so T equal equal and one A okay, in the horizontal direction. There is a net force which is T in the horizontal direction. F equals M A. Right. So net force equals M one A. Okay. So just this much you need to do just to solve put the free body diagram of m1 okay but after some time if you do more practice problems 
you will very quickly recognize all, all that's going on. Okay, very quickly you know, okay, there is T, there is M, Mg, there is N, all that. Okay, so now if you look at M2, M2, <clears throat> the first thing you should recognize is there is a, there is a tension uh, T2. Okay, that T2 is equal to F. Okay, so someone is pulling the thread with F, the F is continuing to T2. Okay, so it, is, it, is, it will basically become T2. Okay, so now F is uh, so m2 on the one on this side has f on that side it has t okay t you know is m1a right so now f minus t will equal m2a what is the net force in the horizontal direction net force f t right so now the uh, um, uh, the the mass is being pulled by the thread on in this side and by this thread on that side, right? So there are two threads. You see, see this thread, right? This thread has a has a F, and this thread has T. Okay. So the total uh, uh, tension on the thread will stay constant on both sides. Okay. So F minus T equals M two A. All right. So then M two G equals N two. Okay. So uh, this normal force and that normal force will be different. This one you can say is N1. M1G equals N1. Okay. So M2G equals N2. Okay. So F minus T will equal uh, M2A. Okay. So now we already know T equals M1A. So, so then F minus T, right? So T is already M1A. So you can then say what you will end up with is if you put instead of T, you put M1A. You will get F equals essentially M1 plus M2 times A. Okay, so finally you will see that if you treated the whole system as one, right, you will end up with the same answer. Okay, so F will equal M1 plus M2 times A. Okay, but we analyzed all the bodies separately. If you can also analyze bodies together, but typically it is done rarely in some problems. Okay, but what is important is you must understand how all the forces are acting. So let's look at a second example. You must draw the free body diagram of each of the bodies. If needed, you can also draw the free body diagram of the threads, what tension, etc. Okay. But you must note all these action reaction pairs, that is, the forces due to Newton's third law. Okay. So now this body is being pulled by a thread at an angle okay so there is a thread which is pulling it at an angle okay and so it is still uh, on the ground although it is being pulled at an angle right it is still on the ground and it is moving horizontally okay so how does that work okay now uh, uh, then in this case he is also introducing friction in this picture if you see right so now there is friction, there is normal force, there is mg, and then there is t, right? So now, if the body is at rest with all these things, and if he tells you that the friction is, it is just uh, enough force, the tension is just enough to make the uh, body start to move, okay? Or he's, in this case, he's saying it is moving with an acceleration a, right? Along the horizontal direction, ai, right? So it is moving with an acceleration along the horizontal direction. So now, what can you say? The T is at an angle uh, theta, right? So T, right? If you componentize T, right? T cos theta, T sine theta, okay? So N plus T sine theta equals mg, okay? So N plus T sine theta equals mg. And T cos theta minus S equals MA. Okay, in the horizontal direction. Okay, so in the vertical direction, there is N, there is the component of T uh, upwards, which is T sine theta, right? Uh, if, 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 if a vector has, has, makes an angle theta, right, the horizontal component will be T cos theta 
the vertical component will be t sine theta okay so n plus t sine theta equals ng t cos theta minus s equals ma okay it's he is telling you that it is accelerating along the horizontal direction with, with an acceleration a right so net f will be ma sigma net f you see the equation he has written there right sigma net f the horizontal direction is ma right the vertical direction there is no acceleration therefore t sin theta plus m will equal mg okay so now you have two unknowns what are the two unknowns t and n okay n is as much as uh, 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 it, it has it takes on whatever value uh, to to stop it from falling through okay so t sin theta plus n equals mg okay and t cos theta minus f right f you know because this is kinetic friction will equals mu k let us say mu k is 0.2 right mu k 0.2 times n okay so mu k times n will equal f okay so now you have two equations and two unknowns what are the two unknowns n and t how do you have two equations because you solve for forces in two directions okay so that is how these problems are solved okay so i will bring the solution you uh, i have written the uh, i have talked to you about the equations what i said is in next class i will bring the uh, solution also okay i will introduce one more slide to this and then i will show you the solution how to solve okay so you have two equations and two unknowns i must solve for the two equations and two unknowns okay so now uh here is a simple uh, uh you know mass hanging from a spring okay now we will discuss spring force okay typically a spring experiences a force negative kx you see negative ku right so constant times the uh, how much you have pulled the spring okay if you pull the spring more i don't know if you have tried gone to uh, you know if you have seen this people will be doing with with the spring right they will be doing with that will be pulling like that you know i don't know if you have seen or they will be pushing like that it is there in the uh, gym you know so you will see that that people do do, do uh, you know exercise with that you know but the spring the more you pull the more force you have to apply that is the nature of uh, hooke's law okay if you ex ex uh, uh, increase the extension it it linearly increases uh, because it is the force is k times x okay so after some time you have to pull more and more and more okay or you have to push more and more and more you know in order to uh, uh, you know reduce the uh, the increase the force okay so uh, <clears throat> so when you have friction the first question you ask is is it moving or not moving if it is not moving then it is called static friction and static friction behaves slightly differently from dynamic friction okay static friction is a inequality what that means is it will what happens in static friction right see you take this uh, this uh, book right this book is sitting in my hand right so if you slightly push it like this man uh, right see this man is trying to push it right when you slightly push it it doesn't move doesn't budge okay when you apply more and more force eventually it will start moving okay so when it is not moving it is called static friction okay so now what is the value of static friction static friction acquires whatever force it takes uh, for the man to push it okay if when the man is pushing it if it doesn't move you can just say that the static friction is as much force as he is applying okay so it is like uh, the last time i discussed uh, angada right angada nobody could move his foot right so it uh, like that uh, you know uh, this is uh, like that you know so he, if you keep if you are not able to push it then it is um, uh, you know it, it takes on whatever force you are applying if you are trying very hard and it doesn't move the friction is equal to whatever force you are applying okay why is that because the body is at rest newton's first law right so so that is the point there okay so static friction is equal to the applied force 
up to the point when it starts moving when it starts moving it is no longer called static friction it is then called kinetic friction or sliding friction sliding friction is mu k times n okay now static friction this point this peak point right that point is at that point the value of static friction is mu s times n if where mu is defined to be the coefficient of static friction so sometimes they'll give you in the uh, problem 0.3 okay now when you push mu mu s times n it will start moving okay then once it starts moving it is a little easier to push i don't know if you have noticed that once you somehow get something to move it's very hard after uh, like uh, you know once it starts moving then it will keep moving because kinetic friction is lower than static friction that's why you have that that break you see this break and it goes down mu k is less than mu s okay this point is mu s times n at that point only it starts moving before this it is an inequality okay the frictional force is less than or equal to mu s times n because the body is at rest it is frictional force is whatever is the applied force that's why this is a 45 degree line the 45 degree line is what y equals x right that's why this line is at 45 degrees so frictional force is the applied force okay so that's how these problems are solved okay so um uh, you know so you should understand whether it is static friction or dynamic friction then you must learn how to solve these problems within that uh, in the context of that uh, situation okay if assumption is correct the friction is static and hence unknown so solve it taking as a variable and acceleration zero relative to the body for which friction uh, is static okay read carefully what what is written okay if the assumption is correct that it is static right then you take into account static means what it is at rest if it is at rest then the forces are balanced so the static friction is an unknown and it is as much as the uh rest of the forces so that the forces the the net force is zero acceleration is zero means net force is zero right so that is the point there okay now if it is dynamic friction or kinetic friction that is something is moving then the force is a fixed value mu times n mu k times n okay in that case what are you trying to determine there is a new unknown the new unknown is how fast is it actually a is the variable okay in the first case friction is a variable right in the second when, when it is uh, stationary when it is moving what is the variable acceleration is very okay or maybe there is some other variable okay in algebra and uh, geometry you don't know sometimes they will ask you who what is the father's age sometimes they will ask you what is the son's age right uh, depending on uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, teacher's question right so you write the equation whichever uh, you have to solve for you solve for okay so don't worry about that all right so what is the direction of friction the direction of friction is if i am pushing this way it will oppose me okay if you are pushing this way it will say okay i am pushing towards you so that the body is at rest that's why you are not able to push it okay and uh, so so remember what you have to do you have to draw the free body diagram right so here he has drawn the free body diagram of the truck he has, he has a truck in an inclined plane right this is the inclined plane sarukumaran right sarukumaran is a truck right so now he is drawing the free body diagram of the truck okay the truck is at rest so he uh, the uh, friction is uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know is uh, now if the uh, truck is sliding down right the friction will be this way okay so the friction <clears throat> why is the friction upwards if it was in the horizontal ground and it was going the car, the vehicle was going to go this way right you would think that the friction will be that way right but no see the truck is like this right so the normal reaction for the truck is it's going to slide down right now because the truck is going to slide down and it is not sliding down friction will oppose the movement of the truck and it will be this way upwards okay 
that always be careful with friction okay friction is an opposing force see direction of friction friction always points in the opposite direction in the direction opposite to the motion of the object even if the object does not actually move okay so remember that okay now uh, typically it is important that there be a complete accounting of all the forces include including their directions force uh, forces accounting on other bodies is not included okay so this is a very important set of ideas you must learn every idea here okay just learn the types of forces become comfortable with the types of forces must understand the various forces acting on each body not the forces acting on another body okay and uh, draw them in a picture like this okay and with direction and values if you know them okay then you can write an equation and solve typically in an inclined plane problem you always try to solve so that one there is your x direction is along the inclined plane and your y direction is perpendicular to the inclined plane that simplifies things a lot okay so all the angles you compute will be with respect to that okay so the, those are your axes they will be little bit angled okay then you will solve against those axes okay then you so it will simplify things for you okay so remember that all right so that is friction static friction okay so we discussed static friction already okay so now <clears throat> rather than look at all this first let's look at a pulley problem okay see pulley problems um you know so there are two uh, sides uh, you know so basically how does a pulley work okay now <clears throat> there are two types of pulley problems okay there are pulley typically you there are a lot of assumptions they make in these problems okay the first type of pulley problem says that the pulley is weightless the thread is weightless okay if the pulley is weightless and the thread is weightless then there is no work done to rotate the pulley okay and there is no work done in moving the threads or and there is no force used to move the threads so then the thread on the left side and the thread on the right side will have the same tension okay now if the pulley is has a weight then they will have asymmetric tensions okay so remember that most often they will tell you the the pulley is weightless unless they tell you the pulley has a mass it does not have a mass okay so so this is the pulley problem there will always be some problem uh, like this in your uh, exam okay either inclined plane pulley something like that okay so you must learn how to solve these problems because they quiz you on that okay <clears throat> so now in the case of the pulley problem right this is the simple pulley problem it is called the atwood machine okay now in this kind of pulley problem you have the the heavier mass is going to go down the lighter mass is going to go up right the m in this case m1 is 5 kilos m2 is 4 kilos right you know in a if you hold up that um, balance right taras i don't know if you have seen taras right in a taras if you see one light, lighter side will uh, go down uh, uh, will go up heavier side will go down right i don't know uh, when i was young there used to be a place called guruvayur i don't know if you have gone to guruvayur there they would be able to put a person and they will put some fruits on the other side you know uh, i don't know it's uh, it's done in the uh, you know for the they will give the fruits then to the to the god okay so now um, if you see this a uh, pulley problem right uh, so uh, now if you take m1 right the mass m1 uh, it is going to go downwards right and mass m2 is going to go up so now if you look at the free body diagram of m1 its weight downwards is m1g the there is a tension uh, t right t minus m1g equals ma right now the other one right in this case it is Uh, uh in in this case it uh, because uh, m1 is heavier m1g minus t equals ma okay m1g minus t equals ma now the other one is going to go up so which is bigger if it is going to go up t is bigger so t minus m2g equals ma okay so
So then if you add the two equations, then you will find that, uh, uh, you know, the T is eliminated, okay? So then, uh, so, uh, so one is, uh, uh, you know, M1G minus T, the other is T minus M2G, right? So then you will have M1 minus M2 times G on the left side, right? M1 minus M2 times G equals M1 plus M2 times A, okay? So A is M1 minus M2 by M1 plus M2 times G, okay? If M1 and M2 are equal, what will happen? It will be at rest, right? So M1 minus M2 will become zero, therefore A will become zero, okay? If M1 is bigger, <clears throat> much bigger than M2, right? Then it will go down faster, right? M, M, uh, M1 minus M2 will, will be much bigger, okay? So those are the considerations that uh, dictate this Atwood machine, okay? So now there is another Atwood machine where the mass is kept here and the pulley is or at the corner and then the, the mass is suspended downwards, okay? That is also has a similar equation, okay? You can try and solve that problem also, okay? Draw the free body diagram, try to solve the pulley problems, okay? Pulley problems are very simple, shouldn't have any issues with them, okay? So here he is drawing the equations, right? T minus M2G equals M2A because the body is going to go upwards. See the Y is upwards, right? Now for the second, for mass M1, it is going to go downwards, M1G minus T equals M1A, okay? So now when you add, you have two equations and two unknowns, so it can be easily solved, okay? So today, this is the, the uh, these are all the ideas uh, that, uh, you know, that, that, there are, the, that I want to present. Before I go, I will quickly discuss, uh, you know, I already discussed friction, already discussed free body diagram, I already discussed, uh, you know, how these forces come into play. I already discussed tension, right? So now I am going to, uh, you know, quickly discuss circular motion, okay? See, what is circular motion, okay? See, circular motion, what happens in, uh, or let me just change it. It is, I am going to discuss uniform circular motion, okay? You see this, right? This is uniform, going in uniform circular motion. What is this? This, think of this like a satellite, okay? See, this is like a satellite, okay? The satellite is, uh, has been put in orbit around this, uh, let us say this is the Earth, okay? This is the Earth and this is a geosynchronous satellite or some satellite, okay? So now the satellite is going round and round, okay? Now, <clears throat> most satellites, they follow an elliptical orbit, okay? But let us assume that it follows a circular orbit and it goes through uniform circular motion. What does uniform circular motion mean? Uniform circular motion means that the speed is a constant. The radius is a constant. Now, if it's an ellipse, you don't have constant radius, but if you have, let us simplify the problem, they, they make it a circle, then the speed is a constant. The, uh, um, uh, the radius is a constant. The, Acceleration, okay. Now, what is the velocity, okay? What is the velocity when something is going in uniform circular motion, right? So first, we looked at the speed, right? Uh, we, we first want to know the speed, right? The, the speed, right, is r omega, okay? So if it is going at a particular rate, right? Uh, what is omega? Omega is called the angular velocity. I already discussed this earlier class, okay? Angular velocity is, so if it goes, like for instance, if a, a satellite is in what is called geosynchronous orbit, right? Geosynchronous orbit means it's like this, okay? It will be at the, uh, pointing at the same point in the earth uh, uh, all the time, okay? If it is looking at uh, uh, Salem, right? It will be looking at Salem all the time. Looking at Chennai, right? It will be looking only at Chennai. Looking at Tamil Nadu, only at Tamil Nadu. Looking at uh, Madhya Pradesh, only at Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so then as the, uh, the earth um, uh, uh, revolves, right, as the earth uh, revolves about its uh, uh, own axis, 
right? As it revolves about its own axis, the satellite will move to be on top of the same spot. Okay, it will be always over the same area. Okay? Such a uh, orbit is called geosynchronous orbit. Now, what is the period? Right? Period is one day. Right? How long does it take to go one one circle? One day. Right? Uh, so the period, right? The angular velocity, right, is related to the period. Okay. Omega equals two pi by t. Okay. So what is angular velocity? It is measured in radians. Okay, so it is the number of angle, um, amount of angle covered per second. So how much angle is covered? It it covers 360 degrees in one day. What is 360 in radians? 2 pi. Okay, so it covers 2 pi in, uh, in, in the period T, right? What is the period of the, uh, it's 24 hours, right? So T is the, is called the period. So 2 pi by T is called the, is the angular velocity so uh, so the period is how long it takes to go one circle right so 2 pi is the angle that is covered right so 2 pi by t is the angular velocity okay so what is the instantaneous velocity right so the instantaneous velocity is r times omega okay r times theta is s okay is the distance covered okay, if you have in a circle if you had radian measure right the radius times the distance uh, the radius times the angle will give you the distance r theta equals the distance covered okay now if you take the derivative of that r theta equals uh, s right s equals r theta ds by dt will equal r times r is constant right radius is constant r times theta right r times d theta by dt d theta by dt is called the angular velocity so what is d theta by dt s is equal to r theta ds by dt equals r times d theta by dt right so what is d theta by dt d theta by t, t, uh, dt is the angular velocity so the linear velocity v right is equal to r omega s is equal to r theta v is equal to r omega okay then the third formula you should know is a okay now <clears throat> firstly before i go to a i must remind you that i have not told you any of the directions okay so now what are all the directions in uh, uh, in in a, a, a circular motion okay the first direction is that the velocity is tangential okay so if something is moving in a circle at any instance the velocity is tangent at that point okay see you see that v you see the uh, in his picture uh, it is going round and round you see the v okay uh, uh, no, keep remember this picture okay you see the v it is always tangential okay then you see the a the A is always radial in uniform circular motion. This is true only for uniform circular motion. It is not true if it is moving faster and faster. Okay, if it is moving faster and faster, there will the um, the V will still be only tangential, but the A will have also a tangential component. That is what he is saying here. Okay, so if it is moving faster and faster, it has what is called a alpha alpha is the um, uh, just as you have angular velocity you also have angular acceleration angular acceleration is when something goes faster and faster and faster and faster i don't know if you have gone in a merry-go-round right when you start out the merry-go-round will start slowly it will go faster and faster and faster and faster right and then you go right until your head starts spinning <clears throat> right so uh, so there what is happening is it is it is gaining angular the rate at which it rotates goes faster and faster and faster it means that it is gaining angular acceleration okay so when there is angular acceleration there is also a tangential component to the acceleration right uh, which, so the the linear acceleration also has a component okay but when there is no in uniform circular motion there is no angular acceleration. 
so there is only the there is still a a why is there an a right there is an a because the velocity is the body uh, speed changing no the speed is not changing but what is changing what is changing is that the direction of the uh, velocity is changing okay so because the direction of the velocity is changing there has to be an acceleration and in the case of uniform circular motion right so uh, there has to be an acceleration there is a force firstly there is a force okay there is a force there is an acceleration okay so in uniform circular motion there is always a, a force called the centripetal force which is always acting so in the case of the satellite what is the centripetal force it is gravity right the satellite is being attracted by the earth so it is always towards the earth right so and and therefore the acceleration is also always towards the earth okay so the acceleration is always towards the earth and the uh, uh, the, the force is also always towards the earth because f equals ma right so that is how uh, uh, uniform circular motion operates the value of the acceleration is v square by r or omega square r okay so if you understood all this v square by r omega square r right and therefore the force is m times a f equals ma and m is uh, and a is v square by r or omega square r therefore that is the centripetal force the centripetal force causes the centripetal acceleration in the case of the uh, 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 satellite in orbit the centripetal force is gravitation okay so there is always a force towards the center in um, 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 uniform circular motion okay so with that i am going to stop for today okay uh, i have gone little bit extra my apologies but i hope you understood all the things that i said okay so tomorrow not tomorrow tomorrow we have also uh, you know continuation of our um, um, uh, electrostatics okay so tomorrow we will have continuation of electrostatics uh, next week i will give some small problems and we will uh, you know we will do one problem uh, of each type uh, here we already did some simple problems today we will do one problem of each type here then i will give you some problems you try it then next class i will then explain the answers okay but i want you to uh, download our app and when you can i want you to try some of the problems okay try some problems understand the material listen to the videos and understand the material and then uh, you know uh, uh, please uh, uh, pay careful attention learn the the material and over a period of time you will get better and better at it and but you must understand these these things in great detail okay physics builds on itself you learn mechanics well then electricity banks will come a little easier or and everything else in mechanics also will become little easier okay everything is a little bit structured on top of each other okay like so you must build a strong foundation then it will grow up okay so i'll see you again next week so please uh, attend uh, professor tiwari's lecture and also uh, gk bats lecture if you are in neat and if you are in je student then you should attend uh, tarun's lecture as well all right i'll see you uh, next class thank you for attending